morning. I've been trying to figure out a way to modify my trap setters so that they will work with uh, both the MB750s that I've been using and this big old trap that uh, Keith gave me. This was one of those TS85 beaver traps and if you're new here I I modified this. I moved the the chain to the center. I added a two more coils and a base plate, laminated the jaws, and I put a gap in it. And it's a heck of a stout trap. I mean, I can't set that without tools for sure. These ones are hard. I have, but it's not easy to do. Um, the trouble I got here, my setting tools, these are homemade. The, the commercial ones that they come with look like this. This one I made, but it they look the same. Uh, this will go underneath like that when the trap is closed, and then you pry it down to, to open the jaws. This one goes the opposite way. It goes... I'm going to do this one-handed here. This one goes... Uh, underneath like that so it folds up underneath this one opens down this way I'll go ahead and show you what I'm talking about here okay so this trap This tool here is one I kind of designed myself. It goes over like that. And these little rings here, they go against that spring to help hold it into place. This one goes underneath like that. The commercial ones, you have two of these, and you set these on the ground and you pry them open that way. This way, see I can do this standing up. I don't have to kneel down which is a huge help with my legs and things being the way they are. I have a hard time getting up and down off the ground. And I don't like to lay, sit on the ground anyway to leave scent. One thing I really don't like about these MB750s, you have to reach inside to set these. That's kind of a frightening deal. But anyway, so that's the way that works. It just folds up underneath there like that. Okay, so here's the problem. With this one, that bottom part down here, right here, hooks under that spring. This other, this little bar hooks on the top here. Now this one, this trap is bigger. It doesn't even come close. So to fix this, I think if I flip it over, and extend the bottom things, bottom of this, so it goes up underneath the spring. This tool, this side, I can make that universal for either one. This one, it's not wide enough. I mean, it, I can get it, it's too short to go on there. If I put it on like that, I can kind of force it to go over. It's not that easy, but I can get it. Okay, now pulling down here, it's not long enough. That should be way down here. This I'm going to run out of room. It's too tight. I can't bend that. So, like I said, I've been racking my brains to try to figure out a way to do this. That I don't want to have to carry a whole different setting tool just for one trap. And by the time you get your you know, your digging shovel, your sifting screen, your setting tools, your lure, your traps, all that stuff. It's a lot to carry. I, I want it to be as compact as possible. If I can make these uh, setting tools work for both, that's the way to do it. So the only way I can come up with to make this work, this hook 
turns upward to go under the springs on that smaller trap. If I turn them over and lengthen this out and put a hook going that way, I can probably make this side work. Now this one, like I said, there's no way it doesn't fit this way. But I could go that way. Put it upside down. I wouldn't be able to do it one-handed. I'd have to kneel on the ground to do this one. But it would work. What I need to do is to make some sort of a, a hook that'll go over the go over the spring here like that. Which actually shouldn't be that hard if I put a piece of angle iron or something through here and weld it on. Anyway, that's my thought. Hopefully it'll work. <laughs> I want to be able to use this strap. The other thing that I'm kind of worried about though, I need to figure out a better way of releasing critters that I don't want. If I get something big and scary in there that I'm not legally able to have, like a mountain lion, a bear, who knows, uh, I need a way to get this off without a big battle and do it safely and easily. Hmm. Gotta come up with that idea, I guess, a little later on. Maybe this summer when I'm not so busy. That should work, I think. So, we go. that out and weld it on. Okay, ugly welds and all. That's what I come up with. Grind that off a little bit so it's not sharp and maybe a little bit better looking. Okay, so that should work for that side. Now this side, if I could just add another crossbar, it would be perfect. Trouble is, the way this trap is shaped, I can't do that. It's hitting, it's hitting down here. So, I'll come up with something different there. Alright, so... Got a little bend on that. Put that like that. Like so. Should work, I think. Is that gonna? No, that shouldn't interfere with anything over there. Well, that's a goofy-looking, ugly thing. The welds are terrible. It'd really help if I could see what I was doing. Hit dark in that shed. But anyway, that's kind of what that looks like. This this hook will do the smaller traps. That hook will do the taller traps. I hope. Looks like it'll go 
down to it now. And this one, like so. Man, that thing's got some spring to it. Looks like I'm binding up on something. What's going on here? Yes, maybe I'm all right. There we go. Was hung up on something. These traps are scary. They're awful dang big. Definitely don't want to get your hand in one of those. Okay, so that one sets that one easy. Or <laughs> easier. Now this one I can still do standing up that could have hurt That's why I don't like having to put your hand inside of these. If that had gone off when I wasn't ready, well, it did go off when I wasn't ready, but had my hand been in there, that wouldn't have really felt very good, I don't think. Okay, what's going on here? A lot of times, oh, I see what's happening. I gotta grind that tab off. What's happening is I'm hitting this base plate like that, and that's causing this to push over the edge of the trap spring right there. So, go fix that. All right, try this again. For some reason, that doesn't feel like it's going down right. There we go. Why am I hitting? Yeah, see, it's that chain. Right there is hitting. This strap here, I got this one from a friend. don't like that that quick link there it's in the it's just kind of a it's blobby it, for my setting tool that doesn't work very well I'm, I'm gonna have to change that somehow one of these days now I have I gotta clean those welds up because they look like crap but the I've got one set of tools that'll set both of these traps. Look how much bigger that trap is than these MB750s. The 750s, a lot of people say they're not big enough, but they are. I mean, I've caught, what have I caught, nine, nine wolves total. And that big old bear, 
And that thing, I mean, it's it would fit inside that bigger trap there. These aren't even as big as they make some of those traps. But, I don't know. The, I do like having a loose jaw. See, with these, you can flip this up out of the way, and you can set this without having your hand inside of it. If it goes off, it doesn't get you. With these, because the, the way these are held on, the, the trigger catch is right here. It's just that little tab on that jaw. And uh, with these, it has double tabs that are welded to the jaw, and you got these little hooks that that go over. So to get both of those on there, you you don't have a you don't have a loose jaw. You can't flip that up. Uh, I was hearing about some people that were cutting one of these tabs off, so you did have a loose jaw, or uh, just setting this trap above that so on one side that way you still have it tied down but you have one loose jaw it wouldn't lay level and the way I have this modified it doesn't lay really level either but you can adjust for that I mean all you have to do is dig your hole a little bit differently it's not a big deal so anyway these things should be able to set them both now with one set of tools They are stout traps, that's for sure. Anyhow, hope I didn't bore you too badly. <laughs> Not much going on right here lately. If I could just find some wolves, go after them, and I don't know. It's, uh, it's a frustrating deal. I... <laughs> really hate to admit it that uh, I wiped them out and that is why I was feeling so bad about that that pack had five wolves in it I knew one got shot and I caught the other four so they're gone as a you know as a rancher or a hunter that's what they're kind of wanting you to do is get rid of them all but as a trapper you never want to knock them all out you know whether it's beaver or pine marten wolves whatever you want to leave a few to reproduce for next year and the year after that and I'm sure there'll be more come through here you know they will they'll the wolves are very territorial and as they get older and they split up and stuff uh, you know a lot of times they'll get kicked out of a pack and they'll go start their own and uh as time goes on, there'll be more wolves that move into this area and take their place. But they're not there this year. They're gone. <laughs> they're in my freezer. <laughs> that and on my wall. So, <sighs> kind of shot myself in the foot here, guys. Keep looking in different places and see what we can do. Until then, see you next time. Thank you for watching.